Alright, so welcome to this video. In the previous video, you learned how you can integrate Dynamics 365 with SharePoint. We discussed about email configuration as well as we discussed about folder level tracking, right? So in this video, you will learn about how can you integrate Dynamics 365 with SharePoint online and OneDrive for business. Okay, so let's start with first SharePoint online. So Dynamics 365 integrates with SharePoint online for Number one, document and content management, right? So you can upload documents and it will be stored in SharePoint online. You don't have to open SharePoint online for uploading the records. For each record, you can uh, upload just in Dynamics 365 interface and it will be uploaded to SharePoint. So we'll look into that. Uh, you also have search capabilities because SharePoint is really good solution for document management, versioning, it allows you to search the information very quickly and find it. If you upload documents in Dynamics 365, then it is gonna take a lot of space, right? So it also saves Dynamics 365 space, which is very precious. <laughs> in this case, uh, you might need to buy more storage if you continue to upload documents in Dynamics 365. So if you want to upload any documents, the best way is to integrate it with SharePoint Online and upload the documents from within Dynamics 365 to SharePoint Online. So we'll look into that. And uh, it's important to note that SharePoint and Dynamics 365 permissions are exclusive. It means that whenever you are configuring Dynamics 365 with SharePoint, the users available in Dynamics 365 and the users available in SharePoint will share different permissions. So the administrator of Dynamics 365 and SharePoint needs to configure the permissions as required. Okay, so because there is no sync in between. There is no syncing of SharePoint and Dynamics 365 permissions. So these are exclusive and this administrator needs to do. So this is how you can enable, you need to go to document management and enable servers based SharePoint integration. There was another option available was uh, SharePoint list component, but now it is enabled with server based SharePoint integration. So, so let's see how can you configure server based SharePoint integration in Dynamics 365. All right, so here I am in Office 365 and here I can just click on SharePoint. Uh, by default, it takes me to the the SharePoint where I can create a new site, but I will just remove this portion and I'll just open the instance.sharepoint.com and here you can see my uh, website is there, my SharePoint site is there, right? Now I need to go to document management, so I'll go to settings uh, and under that I will go to document management. Okay, so you might not see this option configure servers based integration because whenever you have sharepoint online uh, in the same tenant by default it integrates so what i've done is i have removed the sharepoint location sharepoint sites uh, so that i can show you from beginning how it works okay so first thing you need to do is configure server based sharepoint integration so let's just copy this url because it will be useful and i'll just click configure server based sharepoint integration and I'm going to choose here the online option. We have offline on-premise version as well. But in that case, you need to configure ADFS and other things so that it can be accessed. So I'll just use online and click next. And here I need to specify the SharePoint URL. Now, either you can put the root URL or you can create a new URL. Mostly the best practice is to create a new URL, I mean new site, and then define that site location here. But for now, I'm going to just use SharePoint site, the root one, and click next. And now it says that the, the default site is valid, as you can see, and I'll just click finish. So as soon as I fin click finish, you can see that configuration part has gone away, right? Because the SharePoint configuration is now enabled. Okay, so once you have enabled the uh, integration of SharePoint with Dynamics 65, now it's time to configure default document management settings. Okay, so we click on document management settings. And here we have option to define for which entities you want to enable document management. So we'll just select, we'll keep the by default one. So we can just see by default is account and there's a few. And then here we can select the, the SharePoint site. Okay, and then click next. You can see that this is a valid URL and now you need to create the structure. So do you want to do it based on entity or do you just want to do it simply? So if you choose to use 
based on entity then you can just select account and all the folder path would be account slash the details of the account right so based on entity is good idea you can do that and let's click next you can see the document libraries are being created at the path it may take several minutes you can just click ok to continue and it shows here the, the status of each document library that has been created right so uh, 31 is newly created 5 were existing because i disabled the sharepoint configuration for you to see the entire process and you can see this uh, 5 are skipped and 31 are newly created i'll just click finish now okay so once you have defined the document management settings you are set to upload documents so let's go back to accounts and we'll try to upload one document and see how it works so i'll just go for say blue yonder airlines and you need to open the account or any record that you want to upload which is enabled for document management here you need to click on this and click on documents okay so you need to have documents there if the documents is not available then it means that it is not being added to the uh, navigation pane so you need to manually add that so you can learn that in, in crm customization mastery how can you add things to navigation pane and it will be easy for you so here you can upload the document so you can just click on upload and it will ask you to select the file okay the maximum upload limit is 50 mb okay and if you have the bigger file you can just upload directly to sharepoint so i'll just select choose file i'll select this one of the training file that i have and i'll just click ok and here you can see that it has been uploaded to sharepoint and i go back to sharepoint here i will go to site content in the site content i will see all the directories right i'll just go here to accounts and under accounts we imported or uploaded in blue yonder airlines right and when i click here and you can see it here right and it is there in sharepoint and it is there in this account as well so whenever you want to see any document which is related to the specific account or contact or anything that you have uploaded you can just go here and you can see that without going to the sharepoint right so you can just close sharepoint not required you can just upload it here Right, so this is the way you can uh, uh, upload documents and integrate Dynamics 365 with SharePoint Online for document management. All right, so this is how you can integrate. Let's move to the next step. So here are some of the important points you should consider when you are preparing for the exam. So with server-based integration, users have to once sign in and they do not have to sign in in both Dynamics 365 and SharePoint. Because you have Dynamics 365 and SharePoint in the same tenant, right in the same office account and uh, once you logged in with the user it will take that authentication and it will allow you to log into sharepoint automatically but make sure that the users are added in sharepoint as well right so the permissions are important but once you have signed in it will automatically allow you to sign in to both the applications you don't have to manually enter your login credentials because it is in the same tenant office 365 plus there is no additional software is required to install on sharepoint right earlier there was a list component that you need to install and then it is going to uh, take it but this is a server side configuration so there is no additional software required to install on sharepoint and uh, also the users can perform sharepoint action from the dynamics 365 command bar i have shown you how can you upload right and there are other things you can do you can just practice that but this is a very important to know that you can perform SharePoint actions from Dynamics 365 uh, command bar and SharePoint documents will display in Dynamics 365 lists. OK, so that those documents you can see there. So this is how you can configure SharePoint online and I've shown you how you can integrate plus how can you upload documents to start using Dynamics 365 with SharePoint. I want you to consider this, make, do some practice, learn the step-by-step -step process so that you are confident, right? So let's move to the next one. Let's talk about enabling OneDrive for business. So with OneDrive, you get one TB of cloud storage. So every user gets about one TB of cloud storage and that's the best part, okay? So if you have Office 365, then you get OneDrive one TB. And here you have security settings and permissions. So in SharePoint, if you just integrate Dynamics 365 with SharePoint, it is shared with all like person who has access to 
SharePoint will be able to see your uploaded documents as well, right? But if you want that, it should be private to a specific user that, for example, if I have uploaded, I should be able to see those documents. That's why the OneDrive for Business is enabled. And this is where uh, it allows you to keep the documents private to you and users can share manually uh, which is available but by default it will be private to the user so to enable onedrive for business you need to go to again document management and enable onedrive for business right so let's see how can you configure that inside dynamics 365 so here i am in dynamics 365 and under document management here we have enable onedrive for business so i can just click here now before you enable OneDrive for business, you need to make sure that server-based SharePoint integration is available and uh, users should be able to do that, right? So it will be private until you can see that the documents will be private until it is shared with other users. So I'll just click enable OneDrive for business, click OK. And now the OneDrive for business is enabled. So you can configure your OneDrive with business experience here. So just click on this and here's the folder so this folder will be used to store all the personal files that you upload right and i'll just click ok you can change it if you want so let's see how it works i'll go back to accounts and i'm just gonna select for example adventure works and here i will click and click on documents and here you have document location so document on default site or onedrive or share with me or all files so i'll just click on onedrive and if you're doing it for the first time you will see this as the screen so your files will be stored in slash dynamic drive folder in onedrive for business the folder can be changed later i'll just click on continue so you can see here that location is onedrive and i can just upload the document here so click on upload I'll select the file again and click OK and it has been stored. Now you can see the document location is OneDrive here, right? So you will see that this is privately shared. It's like it's not accessible to everyone. If you want to see that, you can just click open folder and it opens OneDrive for business, which is again on SharePoint, but on OneDrive. So under Dynamics 365 accounts, this is the one. So this is done mostly for keeping the documents secure like you want to you don't want to share it with everyone you just want to keep it with yourself uh, in case if you choose to share you can open the location and you can share that from there this is how you can enable onedrive in dynamics 365 so i'm sure you got the idea now you have learned about sharepoint online you have seen how can you configure sharepoint online with dynamics 365 I have shown you the step by step process. Also, you have seen how can you configure it on OneDrive for business so that uh, you have you can keep your documents private. OK, you don't have to share with anyone uh, in case if you want to manually do that, then you can manually share. Right. So these are two options available for OneDrive and SharePoint. And I hope you get the value. I want you to practice this and configure this so that you will get the idea. Right. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next video tutorial. Yeah. <laughs>